Hey friends, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we are reading Joshua chapter 14. Let's right. get started. Let's get started. <laughs> okay, so somebody somebody talked to me today and they said they said uh preacher I'm 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 just kind of struggling through right now in Joshua. And uh, I found that kind of surprising. Like for me, I'm loving Joshua. But here's where they're coming from. When you get to chapters like 13 and 14, there there are a lot of details here. So there are details about this land was given to this people. This is where the land was. It was drawn out. Can I just help you with just a couple of things that might, that might kind of trigger some things for you? For instance, <clears throat> since many of us can't picture this, okay, understand we are not the original readers of all of this information. So imagine if somebody were to move into town and you were to start explaining to them, all right, well, over here you got East of Butchie and you got Macedonia and you got Pedal and, and then right inside Pedal, but to the side of Pedal, there's a Harvey somewhere like where a gas station is. And that used to be this and used to be that with Carterville down. Look, this is just territory and people from here know this language. Now you don't, so here's what you could do. Probably in the back of your Bible, there's a little map. Mm -hmm. And so if there's not that, get online, Google tribes of Israel map. It'll show you where all this is. It'll kind of give you a better mental picture. The other side of this is we're in Joshua chapter number 14. Since the beginning of the book of Exodus, the Israelites have been, have been promised. They're coming out of Egypt and they're going to where? The promised land. Back in Genesis Abraham was promised that his, his, his descendants would receive a land, a promised land. Abraham received that promise when he's 75 years old. He has to wait 25 years for Isaac to be born. Then Jacob comes along, and Jacob has, has 12 kids. They moved to Egypt. They're there for 450 years, you know, before they get out. And then they're wandering 40 years in the wilderness. They're getting here. Don't get frustrated when you're seeing all the details because the details say God keeps his promises down to the last detail. Now, that, that, may, that may not be exciting reading for you, but I guarantee when you get a promise, you're going to want every detail mm -hmm. fulfilled. So just know this kind of detail-oriented God is for you. Now, also, let me give you something else to handle. This land is a land of inheritance, not a land of winning but a land of inheriting. Inheritance come from our fathers and they're passed down to children. This is what the land is about. Now, Sunday morning, I'm gonna preach about Caleb and we're gonna to get to Caleb just a little bit, but I do wanna kind of remind you in this story, this is the story when a land allotments are going on and it says, and the tribe of Judah came to Joshua and Caleb was among them. And he said, remember when Moses told me I would have this land? He said, I'm, I'm ready for it. He's 85 years old. You can go back and read his story in Numbers 13 and 14. He, was, he went into the promised land as a spy and he came back with a good report, but his report was overwhelmed by the bad report. But oh, John, oh, Caleb, man, he didn't go with the flow. He didn't let the crowd, in, he didn't let the crowd push him around. He stood up for the Lord and he's still alive during this story. One of the things I like about it is that it says that Caleb wholly followed the Lord as God. It says that in verses eight and in verse nine. So what he's saying, listen, he's not saying that, that Caleb is sinless, but is this saying that he's dedicated? And by the way, when you read through this, notice that when things are being said about him and he's saying this about himself, nobody argues. Why? Because they can see this visible characteristic that his life, is fully committed to God. He's not sinless, but he's committed. The other thing I want you to do, I want to make a tie-in for you here because this is going to be important later. The place that Caleb takes over and it becomes his homeland is a place called Hebron. It's a mountain. Hebron is not going to be a place that you're going to remember for the rest of your time in the Bible. But I'm going to tell you why it matters. Because in a long time from here, there will be a man named David from the tribe of Judah, which is from the tribe of Caleb. David is crowned king in a city called Hebron. This place is a king-making place. And it is owned by a man who followed a king rather than people. Caleb is awesome. And that's what I love about him. Jim, what was your takeaway from this? I was pretty excited to hear from Caleb too, because... 
I mean, hello, we're in the book of Joshua and we get to see of all the 12 spies, these two were the ones who trusted God. That's right. And we hear a lot about Joshua. Joshua becomes the new leader and stuff. And it's like, what happened to Caleb? And here he is. And what we see in his story between verses 6 and 15 we see he tells his own little blurb of, or we hear his own little blurb of when God promised him his inheritance when he was 40, and here he is at the age of 85 getting it. And we were just talking like, it's one thing to wait on the Lord. We had to wait on the Lord. Maybe our longest specific waiting on the Lord was about two years, two and a half years That's maybe. Right. Um, and can I say that was a difficult time? Like, remind us, God, of what you told us. Remind us, you know, you want to, sh we want you to show us in your word. And that was for two years. And here we see Caleb faithfully walking with the Lord, waiting on the Lord. And it took 45 years. That, that gives us a new definition of waiting on the Lord. By the way, um, do you mind telling them how old you are or is that a secret? That's fine. Okay, how old are you? I'm 39. I... And I will be next year and the year after that and the year after that. So. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I am 40. So, we were talking about this guy has literally been waiting on his promise for God lifetime. more than our mm -hmm. lifetime. Now, I want you to understand something it, just, just for us. As Christians, what do you do with that kind of thing? You put yourself in the spot that Caleb was in. See, as Christians... We're not in our promised land yet either. What's our promised land? Heaven. Heaven. We're not there either. But yet, we also have this promised land. By the way, are we going to win our spot in heaven or are we going to inherit it? We inherit it. Okay. Thank so we may wait. A, or it's not may. We will wait a lifetime. Whatever, however long, however long that is. We're going to wait a lifetime to get there. But will we get our promised land through through the mercies of Jesus? Absolutely. Yes. So by the way, keep reading this stuff and know the details matter because God is a detailed God. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.